For some photographers, there comes a time when they want to stop thinking in terms of single images and start working on something larger. In this video, I'm going to be talking about why I love photography projects. Good morning everybody and welcome to the Ralphland Forest on the very eastern edge of the Lake District National Park, very close to where I live in the village of Shap. And I'm here this morning to try and get a shot for a project that I've been working on since the beginning of the year. To be honest, Ralphland Forest is a little bit of a almost featureless landscape, certainly compared to the rest of the Lake District. So you've got to make the most of what you've got. And so this morning I'm taking a shot here with this farm track, little area that's been cut through these long reeds and that's acting as a nice leading line. Unfortunately, I've got a little bit of color in the sky this morning to help me out. Let me tell you a little bit about the project. I started back in January and it was inspired by a quote by Ansel Adams who said, that 12 significant photos in any one year is a good crop. And so the idea is to try to capture 12 significant photographs of the area that surrounds the village where I live. The aim is to showcase the beauty of this area, which I believe is overlooked by visitors to the Lake District. And I also want to show how this landscape changes throughout the year. So that's why I'm doing a year long project. Now I've identified 12 locations that I want to include in the project. And the aim is for me to go out every week and to photograph one of those locations and try to capture each location at least once throughout the four seasons. As I said, the plan was that I would go out every week. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at things, I've been extremely busy throughout May. I've been working on a project with a company called iPhotography, hence this jacket, and that has had me busy for most of the month of May. So my plan was to try to capture four images in, in May, and I've now got to capture those right at the end. So that's why I'm out this morning, and why I was also out yesterday morning just over there. One of the things that I love about projects, this one in particular, is they push you to do things that you wouldn't normally try. Let me explain. This here is the Wet Sleddal Reservoir. And strictly speaking, I don't need to be here this morning because I've already got the shot of the reservoir that I want to include in the final 12 images. Normally when I photograph the reservoir, I shoot from a position a bit lower down. This is wonderful old barn and a dry stone wall that runs in front of you and a sign that says footpath and you get this great view of the reservoir off in the distance. And I was here back in January and we had a lot of snow and I got a wonderful shot of the reservoir, or nearly the reservoir, I think we barely make it out. And that's the image that I want to take forward. That's my January image. It was actually the first location that I visited as part of this project. Because I'd already got the shot that I wanted, I decided that I'd try something a bit different. I didn't want to shoot the same composition with the barn. The main problem is that this time of year, the sun rises up behind the barn, that puts it in silhouette, and I want to try and keep some detail in it. And so I've come up onto the hills overlooking the reservoir, and from this point I'm looking southeast-ish, uh, over the top of the reservoir towards, I think, the Howgill Fells. And I've got these beautiful grasses in front of me. And I've got the sun rising off to the northeast. So these are being lit from the side. And this is a shot that I wouldn't have found had I not already got that shot in January in the back. One of the aims of the project is to showcase how the landscape changes with the seasons, but how about 
year on year. This is one of my favourite photographs from last year. It was taken here at Ralphland Forest around the middle of May. And as you can see, the whole area is covered in cotton grass. Fast forward 12 months and there's hardly any to be seen at all. Spring was so slow to get going this year. I'm really starting to enjoy these clear sky mornings. And for one reason really, that's because you're almost guaranteed to get some light. And the sun is just rising off to my right hand side. I've turned around a little bit and I'm shooting towards Nipscar Common in the distance. And there's an awful lot of waterworks in this area. We've got two reservoirs and they're connected by a series of underground aqueducts. And throughout Ralphland Forest, there's lots of these little observation thingies. And I want to use this as a bit of a foreground interest for a shot looking up towards Nipe Scar. Now, as the sun comes up, the light's going to get harsher and harsher and harsher. And so I've got to work quite quickly. I reckon that's about half an hour's worth of, of usable light when the sky is this clear. Maybe a little bit more uh, when you're a little bit lower. When you're up in the mountains, it tends to, it's only about half an hour, I might get 45 minutes this morning. Another thing I like about projects is that they encourage you to learn new skills. Now I'm not working on this project alone. I'm actually working with 20 other photographers and the reason I set up the project was a way of teaching people the importance of getting to know your locations. So scouting locations and then working with those locations over an extended period of time, fine tuning your composition, learning how the light works, learning how the landscape changes with the seasons but also with the position of the sun throughout the year and so working with those 20 photographers and kind of really teaching them that encouraging them to get out there scout the locations and kind of keep visiting them throughout the year now every month we meet and at the beginning of that meeting i share the images that i've captured that month usually four images and so far i've only got two if you include this one if you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you may recall that I was working on a project called The Hand of Man. The aim of that project was to showcase the positive impact that man has had shaping the Lake District landscape. Unfortunately, that project kind of got stopped when we had the first lockdown about this time last year. It was supposed to be covering the whole of the Lake District and I, I physically couldn't travel to the locations. So that's, that's stopped, but I do plan to pick that up again at some point. Maybe that will be my 2022 project. Um, but for now, I'm focusing on the, the 12 significant photos. Mostly because if we have another lockdown, I'm still able to work within the area around the village where I live. So hopefully... Uh, if that should happen, this project won't get interrupted. The sun's coming up now and that is making a change to the scene. It's putting a little bit of light on the foreground. But something else that I can do to change the scene and that's to change my polarizer. So the sun is off almost at 90 degrees to the camera. So that has a big impact when I change it. That darkens down the sky, balances out the exposure a little bit, allows me to, to lift a little bit more uh, detail out of the foreground. I'm not sure at this stage which is going to be my favourite shot this way, um, but uh, for what it's worth, here it is now. It is so still this morning that you can really hear the limestone works. Rest assured, they won't be featuring in a project designed to showcase the beauty of this area. Anyway, that's two shots done of the four that I need to get this week. So I'll see you tomorrow morning at another location. This is Hardendale Nab, 
and I've made it just in time for sunrise. I'll come back to that in a minute. But uh, there's this big limestone escarpment up here and I wanted to come and get a shot looking due north with the escarpment running all the way up the frame. Uh, I am actually on the other side of the M6 motorway from the village. And you get from up here you get a wonderful view of the limestone works that I pointed out yesterday. But still not going to be in my shot this morning. Just focusing on the limestone escarpment. The sun is just rising now, just peeking over the Pennines, off to the east. And I'm just waiting for the light to hit the side of the escarpment. I want to try and throw a little bit of that nice golden light on the scene. But my main problem this morning is my sky. It's quite clear, which is fine, but my polarizer is giving me quite an uneven result so rather than kind of pushing it to the max i've had to back it right off so that i've got a more even sky the other problem that i've got this morning is that when i finish the project i haven't quite decided what i want to do but there are a couple of possibilities because i'm doing 12 photos throughout the seasons of course it's going to make a fantastic calendar and i would generally produce my calendars in landscape orientation but I also think that there could be the possibility for creating quite a nice zine to tell the story of the project. And so far, my zines I've, I've produced have been in portrait orientation. Now, this shot works very well in portrait orientation. It's a bottom to top composition. We've got these rocks in the foreground and then the eye leading upwards towards the escarpment. But I'm not quite sure that it works in landscape orientation. I mean, I've got skills. But I'm not a magician. And I said I didn't think I'd be able to find a landscape orientation shot. I think I've done pretty well. So I've got a line leaning out of the bottom right hand corner. And that comes almost as far as the left hand third. And then the rest of the escarpment runs round a little bit, comes, cuts back a little bit into the frame. So it's, it's, it's not too bad. As I said earlier, I nearly missed sunrise this morning, and that's very unlike me. I very, very rarely miss the sunrise. The one thing I'm good at is getting up in the morning. Uh, but this wasn't supposed to be my location for this morning. The two locations that I had left to shoot this week, neither of them really work with this kind of sky. And so I was umming and ahhing about which one to go to, which one would be the kind of damage limitation. And I left it so long that at least one of them was ruled out. And so I decided to come here, which was a location I'm saving for next month when the sun is even higher, even further north. Uh, and I think that's an important lesson. So these projects, they teach us things and, and they, they help us uh, to improve our skills and to learn. Now, landscape photography is 80% about being in the right place at the right time. And the one thing that I'm really bad at is being flexible. If I've, if I've made my mind up I'm going to do something, then if the conditions don't suit, I still sort of carry on and, and I end up with disappointing shots. Whereas this morning, I've actually changed my plans, been a little bit more flexible and come to a location that really works in this light. And I think the shots that I've got, you know, are going to be really good. Whether or not they'll make it into the project, I don't know, because I really do want to come back here uh, a bit later when the, the sun's really rising to the north around the summer solstice. But uh, I'm glad I came today because it's not going to get much further north. I don't think it's making a great deal of difference. So, so this, might be, this might be perfect uh, for this month. Fingers crossed, that is three of the four shots that I need to get this week. The weather forecast of tomorrow is much more promising. A lot more cloud about should be much better suited to the location that I've got planned for tomorrow morning. So I will see you there bright and early. Welcome to the Swindale Valley. You are just in time to catch the end of this fantastic sunrise. 
I'm on my way to Forces Falls, but since I arrived here at three o'clock, there's been this wonderful glow in the horizon that reached its crescendo about five minutes ago. Now this isn't my intended destination, but I just had to stop to take a shot. I managed to find a little elevated position, and I've got a quite a nice little composition. This is this is reactionary. This isn't planned. I've got a bridge in the bottom left third, and some leading lines that are drawing the eye upwards, and then the hills coming down either side and then this wonderful sky. So I'm just going to grab a quick shot before I, uh, before I head on to my intended destination. Another reason why I like projects is that they add purpose to your photography. Now, I can't remember if I've already said that in this video, I really am very tired. But when you have additional purpose, I think you're a lot more determined. This is Forces Falls, and this is an area that I photographed on a number of occasions, and I've never been happy with the result. But because I'm working on a project, and because Forces Falls really has to feature in that project, that's given me the determination to come back again and have another go. And this time, I'm feeling a little more optimistic. Something else that is on my side today is that conditions are absolutely perfect. I don't like to photograph waterfalls on clear sky days when it's really bright. I get lots of hot spots on the water and on the wet rocks. But it's overcast today, we've got a lovely soft diffuse light and that's allowing me to bring out all the detail in this scene. Just want to briefly mention settings for a moment. My favorite shutter speed for shooting waterfalls is an eighth of a second. It's just enough to blur the motion slightly, but still retain a little bit of detail. It doesn't flatten it out completely. Uh, I'm shooting at f8 because there's no depth to this shot, so I want the sharpest aperture possible. And in order to get one eighth of a second, I've had to up my ISO. So my ISO is 320. Now I may have been struggling with my polarizer yesterday, but here it's absolutely essential. If I crank it right up, it takes the glare off of the surface of the water and it makes this pool in front of me nice and dark and that's exactly what I want. That has been a very productive week for me. I really wish all weeks were this productive. If you want to know more about the project that I'm working on, maybe you want to try it for yourself, do your own 12 month project. There is a page dedicated to it on my website and I will leave a link and a description below. Now I've done four consecutive 3 a.m. starts this week already and I am tempted to have tomorrow off, but when things are going this well, it's usually a good idea to keep going. But that's probably for another video, so hopefully I will see you then.